сегодня в 11 часов 15 минут киевский совершил акт, в результате которого был сбит самолет военно-транспортной авиации России, выполнявший рейс по маршруту Чкаловский-Белгород для перевозки украинских военнослужащих для обмена. Поражение самолета осуществлено вооруженными силами Украины из района населенного пункта Лепцы Харьковской области с применением зенитно-ракетного комплекса. Радиолокационными средствами ВКС России наблюдался пуск двух украинских ракет. На борту самолета находилось 6 членов экипажа, 65 украинских военнослужащих для обмена и 3 сопровождающих их российских военнослужащих. Экипаж и все пассажиры самолета погибли. The Russian information field in the first hours after the plane crash resembled something akin to a tsunami. Politicians at various levels, heads of leading media outlets, along with their journalists and even church representatives, did everything they could to make everyone believe their story once again. In this video, we have collected all the facts about the downing of the IL-76, reconstructed the chronology of events, and analyzed the main statements and actions of the Russian and Ukrainian sides in the first days after the tragedy. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, the Russian side has repeatedly faced situations where it suffered significant immediate losses in people, various equipment and facilities, both military and civilian. But not in all such cases did the Russian authorities react in the same way, usually preferring the tactic of completely ignoring and silencing inconvenient events. This is one of the reasons why we decided to draw your attention to the downing of this plane, the loss of the Black Sea Fleet's flagship, the cruiser Moskva, large landing ships Saratov, Minsk, Novocherkask, and the submarine Rostov on Don. The destruction of the Black Sea Fleet's main headquarters with its commander and a large number of senior officers. The loss of many other aircraft such as the A-50U long-range radar detection aircraft, the IL-22M air headquarters, damage to infrastructure facilities such as the Crimean Bridge, oil refineries in Usluga, Tuaps, Volgograd, remained for most citizens of the Russian Federation unknown events in the war waged by their country. The Belgorod region has a long border with Ukraine, and for quite some time now, local residents have been feeling the proximity of war. Among the many such signs are the almost daily air raid alarms. It should be noted that since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, the attention of the mainstream media in Russia has always been high, especially after the events of December 30, 2023, when 24 people were killed and 108 others were injured in the city of Belgorod after the operation of air defense systems. On January 24th, local governor Vyacheslav Gladkov, as usual, duplicated information on the beginning and end of the missile threat on his Telegram page, with an interval of 31 minutes between these messages. The reposts of these messages immediately appeared on the pages of the country's mainstream media. On that day, Local social media outlets noted that the missile alert was also duplicated on all television channels, which had never happened before. Five minutes after the missile alert ended, the governor reported an accident in one of the districts of the region and the work of the investigation team and rescuers at the scene. Vyacheslav Gladkov seems to have decided not to disclose any details of the accident. This particular video appeared in local publics less than 10 minutes after the governor's last message, and within minutes it was distributed around the world. Thanks to this video, the location of the shooting, the direction of the plane's movement, the place of its alleged impact, the place of the crash, etc., were easily identified.
It was this video that subsequently prevented the Russian side from achieving the desired level of conviction in its claims about the downing. At approximately 12.20 local time, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation confirmed that Ukrainian prisoners of war were on board the plane. Around 1 p.m., not only the main faces of Russian propaganda, but also government officials such as Andrei Kartapolov and Vyacheslav Volodin made their statements. Что касается Конгресса и тех, кто ходит в его состав, они должны знать, кому поставляют оружие. Less than two hours from the moment the plane crashed was enough for the Russian authorities to identify not only those responsible and all the circumstances of the incident, but also to make statements about the urgent need to take appropriate response measures. Украинская сторона из района Харьковской области нанесла зенитными ракетами удар по этому самолету, который стал фатальным. Ракеты были запущены из населенного пункта Липцы. Харьковской области. Многое указывает на то, что это могли быть либо американский Патриот, либо ИРСТ немецкого производства. While Russian officials were making statements accusing the leadership of Ukraine's allied countries of shooting down their plane, local media continued to fill the information field with more and more new materials about the event. Thus, within the first 24 hours after the downing, the media published the following. Lists of Ukrainian prisoners of war who were allegedly on the plane, archival photos and videos of them, more than a dozen interviews with witnesses to the downing and family members of the dead pilots, measures taken by local authorities to organize a memorial to the dead pilots in the city of Orenburg, where the plane was based and so on. This atypical activity of the authorities and the media only confirms the assumption that Russia is conducting a targeted campaign to discredit Ukraine and its allies, trying to break the will of Ukrainian society to continue the struggle and at the same time consolidate Russian society to continue the war. The dialogue between the government and society was led directly by Russian President Vladimir Putin. It seems that for Vladimir Putin, observing the regime of complete self-isolation is not relevant at the moment because of the approaching presidential elections, which are due to take place in March this year. In recent weeks, almost all statements from the Russian president have been made during his meetings with loyal members of society or the media. Vladimir Putin made his first comment on the downing only on January 26th. Это не могло быть ни при каких обстоятельствах дружественным огнем, как в таких случаях говорят, потому что самолет был поражен системами ПВО, не, не армейскими какими-то средствами ПЗРК и так далее, а именно системами, ракетами ПВО. Это видно по, по элементам поражения. А наши системы ПВО по своему самолету по определению наносить удар не могут. Там стоят системы свой-чужой, и сколько на, оператор на кнопку бы не нажимал, наши системы ПВО не сработали бы. Техника. Скорее всего, это системы патриоты американские, либо европейские системы ПВО, скорее всего, французские. Но через пару-тройку дней будет точный ответ дан. Самолет сбит, это уже установлено точно, американской системой Патриот. Это уже экспертиза установила. Остановят это или нет обмены? Мы не будем останавливать обмены. Нам своих ребят надо забрать. У нас соотношение людей, которые находятся в, в, в России, тех, которые наших ребят, которые находятся 
на Украине, не знаю сейчас, он один в десяти, это наш даже больше. У нас тысячи, у них несколько, у них несколько десятков. Вот, сотни может. Only on February 1st did official information from the Investigative Committee of the Russian Federation appear regarding the results of the investigation into the downing of the IL-76, confirming that it was shot down by a single missile from the Patriot anti-aircraft missile system. According to the Russian authorities, the publication of this report was supposed to finally close all questions about this event. However, many questions remain unanswered, including what is the fate of the 65 Ukrainian prisoners of war and why was the Ukrainian side denied the transfer of their bodies if they really died during this event? To date, no supporting photo or video evidence has been made public. Why were experts from other countries not involved in the investigation of this event? Why is there no information on the fate of the three accompanying Russian military personnel on board the plane, and whether this number of military personnel was sufficient to escort 65 prisoners of war? Да, да, па, я, я, я уже в Украине, меня, меня поменяли, да, я в Украине уже, все, я, я живу, да, па, я живу, все со мной, все нормально, па, а где мама, па?